Good afternoon, my dear students. Uh, I am uh, Professor Maha Hajazi, Professor of Analytical Chemistry. Uh, I will be the course coordinator for uh, Pharmaceutical Analytical Chemistry 2, PC2 and 3, it will be 203. And also the same content will be given to Analytical Chemistry 2 students 603. Uh, uh, this course uh, will uh, be dealing with volumetric analysis. Uh, our course uh, uh, will be uh, somehow different from the course that uh, you have seen taken in the uh, first uh, semester, uh, dealing with physical uh, chemistry and uh, with uh, qualitative uh, analysis. Uh, we have uh, in this course uh, two quizzes, uh, will, each one will be of out of 10. Uh, we will have uh, also uh, uh, the two practical exams. Uh, inshallah, will be at the half of the uh, of the semester, at the end of the semester, uh, as per the schedule that uh, will be uh, uploaded on uh, the blackboard. Uh, our lectures uh, and three labs will be also uh, uploaded and at the time uh, in uh, the blackboard. Uh, we have uh, a short uh, uh, quiz uh, that uh, will be uh, uh, you can find uh, each week and will be announced for uh, each week. Uh, these uh, quizzes uh, uh, will be out of five marks at the end of the term. Uh, we'll take from all quizzes only five marks as an average mark for your participation in the quizzes. Uh, and it will be uh, all activities will be announced on the blackboard. Also, all materials of the course, either practical or uh, the uh, lectures, will be also uploaded uh, uh, on the blackboard. This <coughs> is divided into uh, different parts. Uh, for the lecture distribution, we'll have introduction. Uh, uh, here, uh, this is the first lecture. Then we have some lectures about acid-base titrations, uh, about six lectures, and we have complex formation titration, two lectures, and precipitometry, uh, another two lectures. Uh, the acid-base titration will be uh, uh, will have uh, application either uh, aqueous or non-aqueous uh, titrations, and uh, this part will be. Uh, the uh, it will be given by Associate Professor Dr. Haney Hunter and Dr. Mahgalel Dr. Nirmin Samir. For complex formation reactions, the Associate Professor Dr. Ahmed Faid uh, will be in charge, and for perceptometry, Professor Dr. Narimani Ragihi and Dr. Uh, Nirmin Samir. About the practical part, the practical part will be divided into two main parts before the uh, half uh, semester a practical exam and after the final practical exam. Before the half semester exam, uh, the uh, doctors in charge are uh, Associate Professor Dr. Haney Hunter and Dr. Nirmin Samir, and for the second part, Associate Professor Dr. Ahmed Faid and Dr. Maha Galal. Analytical chemistry uh, applications are divided into two main applications. Uh, the first is the qualitative analysis, and the second is uh, quantitative analysis. Qualitative analysis, it means identification of substance, uh, as we have already uh, took before, uh, identification of anions and identification of cations. Uh, these are the two categories as examples that we have already uh, uh, studied for qualitative analysis. While for quantitative analysis, it means a determination of quantity of sample uh, that by either gravimetric analysis, volumetric analysis, or instrumental analysis. From the, the name gravimetric analysis, it means the determination of the concentration of substance through weight by weighing a sample by certain means. And so we have a certain weight in uh, grams or milligrams uh, and conversion of this weight into a concentration of sample. And so uh, by this way, 
we have uh, determining the sample by gravimetric analysis. If we are determining the sample through milliliters or through uh, titration, uh, it's called volumetric analysis. While if we determine the sample by putting the sample in a certain instrument, taking the reading of the instrument uh, and use this reading for finding or for uh, uh, substituting in certain laws and finding the concentration of sample. This is called instrumental analysis. That's mean analytical chemistry application could be divided into two different applications. One for identification of sample, which is quantitative analysis, and the second is for determination of concentration of sample, which is quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis, either through weighing a sample in a certain form, which is gravimetric analysis, by titration and having certain volume to use to find the concentration, which is volumetric analysis, and the third by using a certain instrument to determine the concentration of sample, which is instrumental analysis. Quantitative analysis or the analysis with the aim to find the concentration of substance could be divided into uh, three different parts. Regarding the quantity, uh, it could be divided into three different terms, which is macro analysis, semi micro analysis, and micro analysis. If the sample uh, that have have to be determined uh, is more than 100 milligram, and so it's called macro analysis. If it is between 110 and 100 milligram, it's called semi micro analysis, and it's called micro analysis if the concentration of sample to be determined is less than 10 milligram. Regarding the kind of sample, uh, the quantitative analysis could be classified into water analysis, and this is for the analysis of water samples, oil analysis for determination of a, a sample of oil, and food analysis for determination of food. Regarding the process of measurement, a quantitative analysis, as we said before, it's either gravimetric analysis, but it means we are determining the concentration of sample by using weights and uh, volumetric analysis. It means determination by using volumes. And uh, the last one is instrumental analysis, is a determination by using a certain instrument. It means by this slide, the classification of quantitative analysis have different categories uh, regarding the quantity of sample, regarding the kind of sample, and regarding the process of measurement. We'll be, we will focus in our course on volumetric analysis. Uh, by the definition of quantitative analysis, quantitative analysis is deal with determination of the quantity of a substance in a certain sample. For example, if we have a sample of uh, silver nitrate, uh, so we can determine this sample by uh, adding precipitating agent uh, such as chloride. If we uh, separate the silver chloride as precipitate and weigh the precipitate and through the weight of the precipitate, we can determine the concentration of sample by uh, uh, knowing the uh, chemical equation. Uh, uh, then we can use this weight for determination of concentration of sample. And in this type, we can say that we are going through gravimetric analysis through determination of substance through a certain weight. While determination of substance, robotting the substance in the uh, a certain instrument uh, and having uh, the reading of the instrument, which is a physical quantity uh, like uh, current, volt, or absorbance of light, this uh, can be used for determination of a quantitative uh, determination of substances through uh, the instrument, and this will be called instrumental analysis. While what we are dealing with in our course is volumetric analysis, it means with the determination of substance through measuring volumes. 
depend on measuring volume of a standard solution or what is known as titrant used for complete reaction with the sample. We have a certain sample. We titrate the sample using standard solution by titration or by reaction of the two solutions together. Uh, we, we know the volume that is consumed by the sample by taking the volume and convert the volume to concentration of sample then we are working in with uh, volumetric analysis uh, in volumetric analysis uh, we have uh, a standard solution uh, and sample uh, if we have this sample present in the flask and the standard solution that present in this uh, accurate measure which is called burette uh, then uh, the process of reaction of the standard solution present in this burette and the sample present in the flask is called titration. What is titration? Is the capacity of the sample to combine with suitable standard quantitatively through quantitative reaction. If we have a certain sample and then we could find a standard that reacts quantitatively with the sample, we put the sample in the flask we put the standard in the purette by adding volumes from purette to the flask, a reaction will be take place and uh, this process is called titration. Quantitative reaction is a reaction that proceeds forward for producing the staple product, such as this staple product as ionizable compounds such as water, weak acid or weak base, sparing soluble salt and complexes. It means when a standard reacts with a sample to produce or to go through a quantitative reaction, this reaction must end with a stable product in order to go forward and form the product. These stable products are weakly ionizable compounds such as either water, weak acid, weak base, Perceptive or complex ion. And taking an example of uh, different types of quantitative reactions, uh, we have first a neutralization reaction that ends with the formation of water uh, as uh, HCl, hydrochloric acid, plus sodium hydroxide. It ends with the formation of sodium chloride salt and water, which is weakly ionizable product, as we said before. And so the reaction is going forward to form the weakly ionizable stable product. Also, we have during the neutralization reaction, uh, reactions that ends with either the formation of weak acid or the formation of weak base. As we said before, weak acid or weak base are also weakly ionizable stable products. And so the reaction is going forward for the production of these stable products. Example for formation of weak acid, that's the reaction of potassium cyanide with hydrochloric acid and aluminum chloride with sodium hydroxide. Potassium cyanide with hydrochloric acid, the reaction is going forward with the formation of HCN, which is a weak acid, and potassium chloride. And for the reaction of aluminum chloride and sodium hydroxide, the reaction is going forward with the formation of weakly ionizable weak base, which is aluminum hydroxide and sodium chloride. We can see here in neutralization reaction, the product is either water, weak acid, or weak base, and so is the formation of weakly ionizable products which are stable compounds. The second type of uh, the quantitative reaction that ends with the formation of perceptive like determination of ni mercury nitrate with sodium chloride. The formation of mercury chloride uh, is uh, produced, which is a perceptive. The perceptive also is a weakly ionizable product, which is a stable product. Another example is the formation of a complexometric reaction or the formation of complex like silver and cyanide with the formation of argentocyanide complex. 
Electron transfer reaction is also uh, 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 go through the formation of uh, products in which one of the uh, ions will be oxidized and the other will be reduced and so the term redox reaction or electron transfer as ferric and ferrous ferrous is uh, uh, reducing agents will be oxidized to ferric and ferric is oxidizing agent will be reduced to ferrous and this electron transfer reaction by this way we can put our hands on the different types of quantitative reaction and to reach a final conclusion that quantitative reaction must go through the formation of weakly ionizable products or stable products like water like weak acid like weak base like as uh, complexes uh, uh, percepted and uh, electron transfer uh, reactions the requirement of titrimetric reaction we said before that we have a process which is called titration titration means that we have a sample the sample and we have here for in the purest is the standard solution the standard reacts with the sample through quantitative reaction which ends up with uh, the formation of uh, a weakly ionizable stable product the reaction between standard and between the sample must be first simple reaction reaction it's simple what's mean by simple simple reaction means the reaction is easily and uh, uh, accurately uh, expressed by a chemical equation between the sample and the standard the second requirement for titrimetric reaction is the reaction that occurs between standard and sample is a single reaction only one reaction and single reaction that could be expressed by the simple equation the third requirement of titration is the reaction must be instantaneous or a rapid reaction the fourth requirement that suitable standard solution must be available the titrant or the standard solution must be available uh, and finally the last requirement for titrimetric reaction is the end of reaction should be easily determined or detected uh, the end of reaction is termed the end point in point what is meant by end point in point means the complete reaction between standard and between the sample we are here using standard standard going through the sample react with the sample after all the sample have been reacted with the standard and so uh, the end point have to be uh, detected uh, easily and accurately about the standard solution used in uh, titration or uh, volumetric analysis uh, we will here have an overview uh, what are the standard solutions what are the concentrations of standard solutions uh, how we can uh, prepare uh, standard solutions the standard solutions uh, uh, they are used for uh, determination of concentration of sample uh, through a chemical reaction as we said before that uh, go through uh, completion by the formation of weakly ionizable uh, product uh, the standard solutions uh, as we use this solution for knowing the concentration of sample and so uh, they must have exactly known concentration uh, this standard solution is prepared uh, in different forms either in uh, as molar solution or as normal solution or as empirical solution First, let's see uh, what is uh, the normal, the molar solution. Uh, all of us have heard before uh, the word molar solution. Molar solution, it means, uh, uh, for example, if I want to prepare 
solution of sodium hydroxide. Uh, sodium hydroxide, uh, the uh, molecular weight of uh, sodium hydroxide is uh, uh, 40. And so uh, by uh, weighing uh, 40 uh, milligram, uh, uh, 40 gram of uh, uh, sodium hydroxide and uh, dissolve it and complete the volume to one liter, uh, thus we have obtained uh, one molar solution. And so the molar solution is a solution that contains in one liter of solution a molecular weight of substance. It is a solution that contains in one liter of solution one molecular weight of substance. Example, another example, if we have sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, the molecular weight is 60 gram. If we dissolve 60 gram of sodium chloride in one liter of solution, and so uh, we have prepared one molar solution of sodium chloride. Right. The same if we want to uh, prepare a, a 1 over 2 or a 0.5 molar solution, and so we'll take half the molecular weight. If we uh, want to prepare uh, M1 over 10, a lower 0.1 molar solution, uh, we will uh, weigh uh, 1 over 10 of the molecular weight, etc. This is for the molar solution. It, it means molar, it contains one molecular weight, 0 0.5, it's 0 0.5 of the molecular weight, 0 0.1, it's 0 0.1 multiplied by the molecular weight. Uh, it means uh, uh, this number guides us for the weight that have been added to the solution. The second type of solutions, stand or of uh, no, uh, standard solutions, is the normal solution. What is the normal solution? Normal solution, instead of weighing one molecular weight in one liter uh, in molar solution, we are weighing here the equivalent weight in one liter of solution. What is the equivalent weight? The equivalent weight is calculated by different types uh, of calculation according to the type of substance. If we have an acid, the equivalent weight equals the molecular weight over the number of uh, replaceable hydrogen. Uh, if we have a base, it is the molecular weight divided by the number of hydroxyl ion present in the base. If we, if we have we are talking about a salt, it is the molecular weight uh, divided by number of uh, replaceable uh, cations and valency, or number of anions and valency. We we'll take some examples for this. If we have uh, HCl, HCl uh, it is an acid that has only one uh, one uh, hydrogen. And so the equivalent weight equals the molecular weight uh, divided by one. Similarly, for sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide having only one OH, and so the equivalent weight of sodium hydroxide equals the molecular weight of sodium hydroxide divided by one. If we have uh, uh, an example of salt like uh, sodium, uh, chloride, sodium chloride, we have sodium having one positive charge, chloride one negative charge, and so the number of cations will be one and valency one. The most equivalent weight of sodium chloride will be the molecular weight divided by one multiplied one. It means uh, it will be one. If we take this, the anion, uh, it, all, it will be also 1 multiplied by 1. And so the equivalent weight of sodium chloride, either by taking into consideration the cation, it will be equal to molecular weight divided by 1, or by taking into consideration the anion, it will be also molecular weight divided by 1. Empirical solution uh, is the uh, a solution which is prepared uh, especially for a certain substance to be analyzed, uh, it will not denote it by molar or normal, or uh, just it will be written on the bottle of the solution that one milli of the solution 
reacts with how many milligrams of a certain substance and it is used only for one substance. Uh, this is the difference between the empirical solution and the other solution. It's used only for one substance prepared especially for a certain uh, anion or cation um, and uh, the uh, concentration written in terms of the uh, how each milli of the solution reacts with how many milligrams or grams of uh, this substance. The most commonly used standard solutions in our course will be uh, molar a little bit, but most commonly it will be normal solution. You'll find that we are using all the time normal solutions, uh, as it uh, we'll see after uh, maybe in the second lecture. Uh, we can see the advantage of using normal solution uh, in order to uh, determination of uh, or to determine the concentration of uh, samples. Uh, these are the types uh, wrap up before this slide. We have standard solutions. These standard solutions uh, must be exact and must be known uh, because we use it for determination of the concentration of sample, which is unknown concentration. And so this known standard solution uh, are either prepared in molar uh, form or normal form or empirical form. Uh, in this uh, type, uh, the type of question coming here in this part uh, will be just uh, some small calculation by giving you molecular weight and asking you to uh, find the weight uh, that is used for preparing certain type of uh, concern or of molarity or normality of solutions. And this uh, just by uh, calculation of a standard solution. Uh, for preparation of standard solution, we have to uh, different methods. First is the direct method and the second is the indirect method. For the direct method, uh, just accurately weigh an amount of solute as we have already uh, calculated in the last slide and uh, put it in a volumetric flask, dissolve the solute and then complete the solvent uh, to uh, the mark if it is uh, one mark uh, flask. Uh, then after that, the solute must be a primary chemical standard. For this uh, method, which is direct method, direct means just weigh this, uh, the solid and then put it in the flask, dissolve the solid, complete the volume, and that's it. The solution has been prepared uh, and uh, with known exact normality. So to use this method for preparation of standard solution, we must have certain requirement in the standard or the substance solid that, that have been weighed. The solute here must be what's known primary standard quality substance. The primary standard quality substance, it means we will see uh, uh, later on in the next slide the properties that have been uh, present in the uh, primary standard quality substance. If the substance is primary standard, primary standard, uh, so we can use the direct method just by weighing and dissolving the substance, and by this way we have prepared the standard solution. If the substance is not primary standard quality or lacks any of the requirement of primary standard, and so it is called secondary standard material. If the material is secondary standard, and so we cannot use the direct method for preparation and move through the indirect method. The indirect method is divided into two steps. First step is to prepare a solution as we have prepared here in direct method. And the second step is the uh, standardization of the solution and uh, the comparison of this solution with a primary standard solution. First, 
we we look at the substance. If the substance uh, having uh, the requirement of primary quality standard, and so we will prepare the standard solution by the direct method. If the substance used is not a primary standard substance, and so we will move for preparation of the standard solution by the indirect method. Indirect method requires an extra step uh, over the direct method is in that after preparation of the solution and uh, through weighing and dissolving and completing to volume, the solution have to be standardized using a primary standard solution. The characteristics of primary standard chemical are first the substance must be highly pure very high grade of purity and the known composition second it must be easily tested for impurities by simple test third it reacts with other substances quantitatively according to balanced chemical equation fourth stable uh, it must not absorbing water or absorbing carbon dioxide from uh, the surroundings. Fifth, high molecular weight, high equivalent weight. It's not molecular weight, high equivalent weight and uh, readily sol soluble in solvent. So if the substance we are dealing with, we are using for preparation of a standard solution, Having these requirements, uh, so it, it, it can be uh, used uh, for preparation of standard solutions by direct method. So let's give an example for that. If we have uh, some substances that are hygroscopic, hygroscopic means uh, after weighing the substance uh, and it will absorb moisture from the surrounding and it will be like a paste and so we cannot accurately weigh a, the, a certain weight of this substance if the substance is unstable absorbing water or absorbing carbon dioxide from the surrounding and even the other uh, requirements are present but this is not fulfilled and so the substance is called not primary standard substance and we can uh, 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 say that we have secondary standard material. For having secondary standard material, this will move us to the use of indirect method instead of direct method for uh, preparation as the weight we have already uh, weighing are not accurate as a substance absorbing uh, water and so the weight we have weighing is not accurate. We cannot use this weight for just dissolved and making the volume to one liter or to prepare the standard solution. We have go to an extra step after preparation of the solution to standardize the solution and make it exact. We will take uh, some examples of primary standard substances. Uh, as we said before, the primary standard substance will be prepared by direct method. These substances as potassium hydrogen cephalate uh, these examples are very important. Uh, uh, it may come as uh, MCQ question or uh, uh, some true and false questions. Uh, potassium hydrogen cephalate, uh, benzoic acid, uh, constant boiling point hydrochloric acid. Uh, here I'm stressing on this is a constant boiling point uh, uh, hydrochloric acid and the not hydrochloric acid. If I'm asking in the question about hydrochloric acid, it will be a secondary standard material. But when I said it is a constant boiling point hydrochloric acid, and so it will it will be a, a example of primary uh, standard chemical. Anhydrous uh, sodium carbonate, anhydrous potassium bicarbonate, uh, these are examples plus mercury oxide of primary standard chemicals. Uh, be sure that this anhydrous one and this also anhydrous because if the question asking about sodium carbonate it will not be a primary standard material but if it is stated that is anhydrous sodium carbonate 
and so it will be as a primary stem built material. The same for potassium bicarbonate. Uh, these are examples uh, that uh, we have to know uh, very well for the primary standard chemicals. Secondary standard chemicals uh, is any substance that loses any property of the primary standard. As we said before, it will be a secondary standard chemical. Example of secondary standard chemical uh, is uh, the oxalic acid, uh, borax, sodium hydroxide, and hydrochloric acid. Uh, the primary standard chemical, as we said before, uh, by preparation, we use the direct method for its preparation. And the secondary standard chemical, uh, it, 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 uh, it doesn't have the property uh, that have, uh, have been uh, present in primary standard material. And so uh, we have to prepare the solution. As we prepare the solution, uh, it is approximate and we are not accurate about the concentration of the solution. And so we must go to another step is the standardization of the solution to make it exact. And this is done against the primary standard solution. It means we have preparing the solution which is not accurate, and so we have to standardize the solution or make some calculation to make it exact form or to make it as it is prepared from primary standard material. Uh, so uh, examples here are very important. You have to know the examples of primary standard material and if any substance of these, uh, I'm asking you what are the, what is the type of method used for preparation of that solution, you must uh, uh, answer by direct method, while for this solution, HCl, sodium hydroxide, borax, and oxalic acid, these are secondary standard material, and they are prepared by indirect method. What is the difference between indirect and direct? Direct is just weighing, dissolving, completing the volume, and this is now exact solution, while indirect weighing, uh, dissolving, uh, complete the volume, and the standardize the solution. And this is an extra step than the direct method. In this slide, we want to know how to standardize the secondary standard solution. If we have chemical, uh, that is either HCl, borax, sodium hydroxide, or oxalic acid, uh, which is, as said before, it is not a primary standard substance or not primary standard chemical. And so how to standardize these solutions? Uh, the procedure for standardization of, uh, of secondary standard chemicals proceed like uh, that. Uh, we took a certain amount of the uh, secondary standard uh, solution of approximate concentration that we wanted to standardize or make it exact. And we put here in the burette the primary standard solution, a solution of exact concentration, and we will use this solution for standardization of the secondary standard present in the flask. First, we take a certain volume, for example, 10 milliliter of the secondary standard that have to be standardized and put in the burette the standard solution, which is the primary solution that uh, we used for standardizing the secondary standard present in the flask. Then starting the titrations till the end of the titration or end of reaction between the known standard solution and the secondary standard solution that have to be standardized. Then we calculate what is known as a standardization factor. Then we calculate what is known as a standardization factor. Standardization factor or correction factor, we give it the sample F small. F small equals what? Equals the volume that we have taken from the standard solution to complete the reaction over the volume of the approximate solution, which is uh, 10 milliliter, as I said before, in this case. Then we calculate the F 
small or the standardization factor, which equals the volume of exact solution that have been taken from the purette over the volume of the approximate solution that have been added to the flask. For example, if I add here 10 milliliter and I consume from the purette till the complete reaction 9.8 milliliter, then the standardization factor will equal 9.8 over 10 and this will equal 0.9 eight factors. In this case, this standard solution of approximate concentration have been standardized and each volume will be taken from this solution during any uh, determination will be multiplied by the factor which is the correction factor which is equal 0.98. Again, if, how to standardize standard solutions, secondary standard solutions? If it is primary, it's okay. It's used without going through any calculation of the correction factor. And so, if we have primary standard to substance and prepare it by direct method, we don't have to go through any calculation of F small or correction factor. And so if I ask you a question and ask you about the primary standard substance, is the primary standard solution will have a correction factor? No, because primary standard substances are prepared directly by dissolving the substance in the uh, solution or in the solvent and completing the volume. And thus, at this time, we have prepared the primary standard solution, which with no correction factor. The secondary standard solution need to be standardized. Secondary standard solution are standardized against the primary standard solution in order to calculate and define the F small or the correction factor. As we have already calculated the F small or the correction factor for any bottle that we used the secondary standard uh, solution, we have to write on the label of the secondary standard solution that F small equals what? Because when we took any volume of this solution, we have to multiply this volume with F small as we, as we, have a, uh, as we are going for correction of the volume from approximate to exact. This value or F small is accepted from 0.95 to 1.05. The, the accepted value of F, F small to be between 0.95 to 1.05. If it is below 0.95, it's not accepted and the procedure of preparation of standard have to be repeated. And if it is more than 1.05, also, it is not accepted, and the process of uh, the procedure of preparation of secondary standard have to be uh, repeated. Here we are moving through the determination of sample concentration. By these last slides, I have fin that we have finished. Uh, we have already know that titration it will be a reaction between sample and between standard solution. The sample is of unknown uh, concentration, the standard of exact and known concentration. The types of standards have been mentioned. How to prepare a standard solutions also have been mentioned. Standard solutions either having correction factor or not having correction factor at what is the difference? Already we have discussed this. And so we reach finally here that we have a standard solution that have been prepared correctly, either it is primary standard or it is secondary standard. And we have a bottle of this solution. And we have 
for a certain volume of sample of unknown concentration that we have to use the standard solution to know the concentration of this sample. The concentration of the sample solution is calculated either by either as gram per liter or as gram per cent. If we want to calculate the sample as gram per liter, that means that the sample have been supplied to you in the form of solution. When I give you a sample in the form of solution and I asked you to calculate the concentration of the sample and so you have to use the unit gram per liter for calculation of concentration of sample. If I give you the sample in the form of solid and, and tell you take one gram of this solid and analyze this sample and then calculate the concentration and so you have to calculate the concentration as gram percent okay let's see how to calculate the concentration of sample using the standard solution we are going through the titration titration means as we said before the sample is in the flask the titrant is the standard solution we are use certain volume of titrant until we reach the end of reaction which will be shown or will be detected by a certain type of indicators and this will be in the practical sessions then when i reach the complete reaction i have a certain volume of standard that have been consumed the volume of standard that has been consumed will be multiplied by the correction factor but here is a very important point when the volume of a standard will be multiplied by a correction factor if the standard used is a secondary standard and on its label there is a correction factor which is equal 1 equal 0.89 equal 0 0.8 uh, 0.98 equal 0.95 up to 1.05 this the correction factor must be from 0.95 to 1.05 and will be written on the bottle and so when I take a certain volume for titration I must multiply this taken volume by the correction factor if I use a, a primary standard uh, solution and so no correction factor is needed and it will not be written on the bottle and just here we'll use the volume of standard only this is multiplied by another factor which is called f capital or equivalent factor we'll see in the next slide how to calculate the equivalent factor uh, multiplied by thousand and then divided by the volume of sample this is the main uh, rule uh, for calculating the, uh, the sample solution, sample concentration in the form of gram per liter. Okay. For example, here if I took 10 milliliter sample to analyze, and so I will I will do the titration. I will take the volume of standard that I have used in the titration, multiplied by f small or the correction factor if the sub if the standard is a secondary standard substance multiplied by the equivalent factor that we will see uh, how to get the equivalent factor multiplied by divided by the volume of sample if it is 10 milliliter we'll divide by 10 and then multiply by thousand to uh, to make it as uh, per liter unit uh, and so this is the formula that we are substituting in for having uh, for a determination of concentration of sample as gram per liter if we have the solid sample that as we said before if we, I give you an, a solid sample and I told you to weigh certain amount of sample uh, and so the concentration will be uh, uh, expressed as gram percent in this case we we will multiply the volume of standard also by f small if it is a secondary standard material 
again, if it is a primary standard substance or a primary standard solution, we not multiply by f small as there is no correction factor as it is prepared by direct method. Correction factor only for secondary standards that are prepared by indirect preparation method for standard solution. Then equivalent factor. We will see as in the next slide how to calculate equivalent factor multiplied by 100 and divided by the weight of sample uh, and this is for solid samples. And so follow up this calculation and substitute in this calculation if are going through uh, uh, the uh, determination of concentration expressed as gram per percent in case of solid samples. So in this slide it is uh, uh, make a, uh, a wrap up for the uh, uh, two types of the calculation of uh, the concentration of substance. Uh, we'll see this calculation uh, during our uh, practical uh, experiments uh, each uh, week uh, in the lab. Uh, either uh, we are having solution sample and so uh, we will always express the concentration as gram per liter and if we have a solid sample we will express uh, the concentration as gram percent. Uh, still one point which is not clear until now uh, about the equivalent factor or the F capital. We have here the equivalent factor F capital, how to calculate uh, the equivalent factor uh, and we'll see it in the next slide. In order to calculate the equivalent factor, uh, we'll see here if I have a reaction, uh, we'll give some uh, examples of these uh, reactions, but generally uh, we have uh, uh, a rule uh, and a very simple law uh, for using and uh, determination of equivalent factor. Equivalent factor uh, equals uh, the equivalent weight of sample uh, multiplied by the normality of the standard and divided by 1000. Let's take some examples here. Uh, if we have, uh, we are making a determination of a sodium hydroxide sample. And for determination of sodium hydroxide, we used a standard solution of 0.1 normal HCl. And uh, this is a secondary standard substance, and so I have to mention that F is small equal uh, point nine eight. Sodium hydroxide, this molecular weight of sodium hydroxide is forty. This is the molecular weight. So, if I give you this information and uh, tell you to find the F capital, uh, what will be the F capital? F capital, uh, uh, let's see the first, is equivalent weight of sample. The sample is sodium hydroxide. What is the equivalent weight of sodium hydroxide? Equivalent weight is equal the molecular weight over number of OH or number of H or the uh, uh, number of cations uh, multiplied by valency or number of anions multiplied by valency or case of, si of salts. We are here having base, which is sodium hydroxide. Number of OH in this base is one. And so if I want to calculate the equivalent factor for this titration, we look for first look for the sample. The sample is sodium hydroxide, it is a base, it contains one OH, and so the equivalent weight of the sample is 40, which is equal to the molecular weight divided by 1. Then, normality of standard is 0.1. The normality of standard is 0.1 over 1000. And so, if I have a sample of sodium hydroxide, and I have a titrant of 0.1 normal HCl, then the equivalent factor there is then just generally the uh, equivalent factor F capital will equal 
will equal equivalent weight of sample which is 40 over 1 multiplied by normality of standard which is 0.1 over 1000 and this is the equivalent factor that will be used in the previous calculation as we said before for calculation of sample as gram per liter let us see here an example the equivalent factor is calculated from the reaction like this this is the steps for calculation of equivalent factor. Uh, for example, here we have sodium carbonate and HCl. This is the sample and this is the standard. From the equation, H1 of sodium carbonate reacts with 2 of uh, HCl. Then, uh, if I have one normal HCl uh, reacts with the one normal of sodium carbonate over 2 if we use n over 10 uh, uh, therefore uh, we divide this one this is in 1 liter then this is the equivalent factor going through the equation and how to get the equivalent factor from the equation we will go through these steps very brief in each lab. In each lab, we will go through the steps of extracting the calculation or extracting the equivalent factor from each reaction. Now, we will not go through in the theoretical part through the steps of extracting or calculation of equivalent factor from each reaction but just we will apply this equation which is called the calculation of equivalent factor by multiplying the equivalent factor of sample by the normality of standard over 1000 let's here apply this equation for this reaction look only on the reaction between sample and standard the sample is sodium carbonate and the standard is HCl. Sodium carbonate standard, sodium carbonate sample, we calculate the equivalent weight of sample. What is the equivalent weight of sodium carbonate? Number one, sodium carbonate is a salt. Then the molecular weight will be divided by either number of sodium, which is two, multiplied by its charge, which is one, and so the equivalent weight for sodium carbonate will equal the molecular weight of sodium carbonate over 2 multiplied by 1. If we calculate the equivalent weight of sodium carbonate by using a 9, and so we have 1 carbonate and its charge is negative 2. And so the molecular weight of sodium carbonate will be divided by 2 multiplied by 1 it means divided by 2 so if we have n over 10 HCl which is 0.1 normal 0.1 normal and we have a sample of sodium carbonate what is the equivalent factor will be equivalent factor will be the equivalent factor of sample which is sodium carbonate multiplied by the normality of standard which is 0.1 or 1 over 10 divided by 1000 let's see here this is the calculation as we said before in this general law the the f capital will be calculated will equal the equivalent weight of sodium carbonate over 10 which is 1 over 10 the normality of standard over 1000 which is present here in the uh, low. The equivalent factor expressed as gram sample. Gram sample. Gram sodium carbonate. If the sample is sodium hydroxide, it will be gram sodium hydroxide. And so we calculate uh, this uh, number and then this will be the equivalent factor and expressed in terms of gram of substance. And so without going through the reaction details, this will be given in the practical part for each sample type. Uh, we are giving here 
a general formula. The general formula used for calculation of equivalent factor is the equivalent factor is the equivalent weight of steps of sample multiplied by normality of a standard solution divided by 1000. By this way, we have finished our lecture, uh, the first introduction uh, lecture uh, in acid-base uh, titration or in uh, generally for volumetric analysis. Uh, then we'll start next lecture with Dr. Hani about acid-base titrations and applications. Uh, in this lecture, as a wrap up also, uh, uh, we have went through uh, different types and applications of uh, uh, analysis, uh, volumetric analysis, either uh, uh, either it is volumetric analysis or uh, is gravimetric analysis or instrumental or our quantitative analysis. Uh, uh, we said that our course will be on volumetric analysis. Uh, we have said that volumetric analysis means titration. Titration means I have a sample of unknown concentration and the standard of known concentration. Then we uh, uh, went through uh, different types of uh, standard materials, either it is primary or secondary material. What is the requirement of a primary standard material? How to prepare standard solutions, either by direct or indirect method? Depends on what? Depends on the type of standard substance used for preparation of solution. Then we went through how to calculate uh, the uh, concentration of sample, either it is gram per liter or gram uh, percent. And uh, in order to calculate uh, the uh, sample concentration, we have to know what is the F capital or equivalent factor. The equivalent factor uh, is calculated by the equivalent weight of sample multiplied by normality of standard over 1000. Uh, by this, we have finished our lecture today, and I hope we will uh, agree, uh, inshallah, for a uh, time for discussion, and if you have any questions, and also I will uh, put some questions on the blackboard for training on this, uh, on some calculations uh, explained in this lecture. Uh, thank you.